If you ask just about anyone what it takes to lose weight, get in better shape, they're gonna tell you to focus on eating clean. However, today I'm gonna make the argument that just focusing on eating clean not only doesn't work, but if you're not careful, could even make you fatter. Hey, this is Colin DeWay. If you wanna master your metabolism, end the yo-yo dieting, and create forever results, start now by subscribing and click on that bell notification so you don't miss anything. Okay, let me get this out of the way right up front because I know I'm gonna be attacked for this. I'm not saying that eating clean is bad. Definitely, you should focus on nutrient-dense foods. These are things that you wanna make a large part of your diet. But the argument I am making is just focusing on clean eating is not a solution for a lot of people. If it is for you and it's worked great and you've been able to sustain it and do this for your life, good for you, but I'm saying, it doesn't work for many, many people. One of the biggest problems with focusing on clean eating is everyone has a different definition of what clean eating even means. Ask five different people, what is clean eating? And you're probably gonna get five completely different answers. Not only that, but if you focused on different diets with names that focus on eating this and not eating that because one food is good and one food is bad, if you took them all and combined them, there'd literally be nothing left in the entire world that you could even eat. But all these different diets can always show you examples of people who've lost weight. So clearly there aren't foods that just make you fat and there aren't foods that just make you thin. It's all about context of your overall diet. And no matter what diet plan you follow, they're all just different ways of putting you in a calorie deficit. You cannot lose weight without being in a calorie deficit. This isn't to say the only thing that matters is tracking calories and a calorie deficit is complex. I have videos talking about this, but you do need one to lose weight. And the problem with eating clean is you can still relatively easily overeat on calories if you're not careful. There's a lot of foods that are really high in fat that are easy to overeat. If you just add olive oil and different oils to all your different foods, that adds up really quick. I've seen people just pound down on different containers of nuts just because they say, hey, it's healthy, but they don't realize they're putting down hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of calories in one sitting. Hell, the way you see a lot of people eat salads, they might as well just eat a double cheeseburger and fries with the amount of high calorie dressings and everything else they put on there. Now, before I go into other reasons why clean eating isn't a good solution for most people, the reason it can work and does help is because it helps you feel full. Whole foods, nutrient dense foods, these minimally processed foods are often very filling with lower calories. They're higher in fiber, higher in protein, higher in different micronutrients. So it helps you keep calories down by helping you feel fuller. But a big part that's often overlooked when it comes to someone's diet is the sustainability of that diet. We tend to just look at things as, I'm just gonna do this until the weight's gone and then we stop and that's why it's not sustainable and that's a big part of why you regain the weight because you can never just be done. Arguably an even bigger problem is the psychology that comes behind looking at foods as either good or bad. This can very much lead to eating disorder type of behavior. If you look at food as good or bad, if you do happen to go off plan, you feel bad about it, you feel guilty, you beat yourself up. A lot of times you binge on it even more because you feel like, well, I'm already off my plan, so what's the point? Let me get in as much as I can now before I start my diet again tomorrow and this can set you back in a big way. Not to mention there's no morality in food. You should never feel bad about food. Food is a big part of our lives. It's a big part of anniversaries and celebrations and get togethers and just thinking that you're never gonna have a piece of cake or whatever else you enjoy ever again, probably not gonna be a very sustainable solution. Plus a lot of times when people eat clean as their form of trying to lose weight, they go on these massive cheat meals or cheat days that completely undoes all their hard work during the week. I mean, how often do you see someone who says, I do great five days a week, six days a week, but then I go nuts on the weekend and I can't seem to lose weight, but I need these cheat days or I'm never gonna be able to keep doing it. The reason you think you need the cheat day is because of how restrictive you are with your diet the rest of the week. And if you just learned how to include foods in more moderation as a diet system as a whole, there's a pretty decent chance it's gonna be more sustainable and you won't feel the need to completely binge your face off because doing this can easily not only set you back in terms of undoing your entire deficit from before. I mean, if you created a 3000 calorie deficit six days a week and then have one or maybe two days where you go three, four, 5,000 calories above your maintenance, you're actually going the wrong direction now. So it's not what you do on any individual day, it's the entire diet. And this is a big reason why I look at averages when tracking calories. But again, that's the topic for a different video. I actually have something I will reference at the end of this one that I'm hoping will help. 
Now, none of this is to mean that you can't have untracked days or days where you have more food that you normally wouldn't have, a little bit more fun. Absolutely, but I think a better strategy for most people is to do more of like a refeed style where you do allow yourself more food, more calories, but it's in a more controlled manner to make sure you can keep progressing. Plus, a huge thing you need to remember is one day can never make or break everything, but if you allow these singular days to turn into weeks, months, and years, then it absolutely can. And the bigger problem behind all of this is how adaptive your metabolism is. This is something a lot of people don't understand. Your metabolism adapts. It's gonna slow down the more you diet. The more aggressively you diet, the longer you do it, the more these adaptations are gonna happen. And then your hormones get all out of whack too, especially your hunger hormones. So what ends up happening is you restrictively diet hard, your metabolism slows down, your hunger hormones get all crazy, you feel like it's not worth the effort, I can't take this anymore, you give up. Because of how restricted you are and now you're not trying to lose, what's the point? You start eating everything in sight with a slow metabolism, the weight shoots back on in a hurry, probably overshooting previous levels of body fat. Your metabolism hasn't even had a chance to recover yet because it happens so rapidly, you panic, you think, crap, I need to go back, it's getting out of hand, you try to diet harder again, your body's not really responding because because the metabolism is still running slow and this cycle just continues getting worse and worse and worse. So this is a big reason why you keep trying to go on some certain diet with a name or some kind of clean eating diet and you can do it for a while but it never works forever and that's one of the other problems. If your strategy is just eat clean, what are you gonna do when your metabolism does adapt? This is why you see plateaus, it's your metabolism adapting, and there's really no way around this. It's just gonna happen at a certain point. There's this old meme I remember seeing with the dinosaur guy, maybe I can try to find it and plug it on here, where it's like, what do you do if you stop losing weight? Just eat cleaner? And it's a good point, like, what are you gonna do? You have to reduce your calories somehow, and this is why I personally prefer to look at a more flexible dieting approach tracking macros or at the very minimum tracking calories and protein as protein is super important it's just so helpful in terms of the high thermic effect of food the fact that it helps build and maintain lean body mass the fact that it's very filling and helps you feel full but if you prefer to interchange more carbs and fats that's fine but just learning a more flexible approach with more accountability can keep you on plan teach you how to include foods you do enjoy still get the results you're after and this can help get away from the good versus bad mentality and help you stay on plan. Of course, everyone's different. I'm not saying this is a magic solution for everybody, but it is something I highly recommend you try at least for a while and give it a real chance because for things to be sustainable, to have a more intuitive eating approach, you have to build that knowledge base first. You can't just look at foods as good versus bad and just think that's gonna be the way to eat intuitively because then the intuition is if you go off plan, there's something wrong and it's bad. So you wanna start learning what's in the food you eat, how much a portion size looks like, and all these different things so that you can understand as you move forward with your life and learn how to include them more. So this doesn't mean you have to do this forever, but using it as a teaching tool in their early stages can be super helpful in making it more of a lifestyle not to mention, at least while you're trying to lose weight, now you know how to make adjustments because you know how much you're eating. It's not a guessing game anymore. You have cold, hard facts as long as you're staying diligent. And then when you do adapt, now you know how to adjust and keep the process working. Plus, it's just mentally so much different when it's your choice whether you're gonna eat something or not. Like, okay, there's ice cream available. You can have that ice cream or you can not have that ice cream. There's no right or wrong answer. It's your choice and you can decide, hey, I wanna include this now, I'm gonna make it a part of my day, and I'm fine with that, and then you can just move on, or you can say, you know what, right now, that's not the best option for me, I'm not gonna have it, but I do know it's available for when I do want it. That's a big difference between you cannot have that ice cream. If you have it, you're being bad, and you should feel guilty. Like That's a completely different ball game, and people just tend to rebel against things more when they feel like it's not their own choice. But even with this, I think psychologically, a way to approach this is, again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't try to you know, eat cleaner and eat more nutrient-dense foods and things like that. Absolutely, it should be a large part of your diet. But most people don't look at trying to eat more nutrient-dense foods. They look at eliminating quote-unquote bad foods. And I think a much better strategy is not look at eliminate all these other things. 
include more nutrient dense filling foods, include more veggies and fruits and whole foods, as this is gonna help you not only start implementing more of these things, but it's gonna help you feel fuller and you kinda almost automatically eat less of the other things just because you're not quite so hungry. That's the real problem with like high sugary foods. It's not like sugar just makes you fat. There's plenty of research to support as long as calories and protein are equated, it doesn't really matter how much sugar you have, not only with fat loss, but also health markers, but it's just not filling. It's void of micronutrients and your vitamins and minerals, and it's easy to overeat. It may make you crave more, and you can pile on the calories so much faster than, say, eating a bowl of broccoli. And I think this is an important point to make. I think a lot of people, myself included, kind of go through this progression when they go from trying to lose weight and then focusing on eating clean, eventually learning more about flexible dieting, and then ending up getting to a better place. What happens is you start with clean eating, it works for a while, you realize you can't do it long term, you eventually find flexible dieting, and all these foods that were off limits before are now fair game, so what you do is eat as much of them as humanly possible while still hitting your numbers, but then you realize, wait a second, I don't feel so good right now, you feel like crap, you're not performing as well, and you think, okay, maybe this isn't the best solution, and then in the long run, you start learning, okay, it's a balance of eating healthier foods, including some things you do enjoy, not getting so tied up in certain occasions and knowing that it's not gonna make or break anything, and living a more balanced, healthy life. That's kinda like the progression over time, but it takes time, this stuff doesn't happen overnight. You're not gonna have certain thought patterns that you've had for years, possibly even decades, and just flip a switch and then just be good. Like, no, you're gonna have to practice this. You're gonna make mistakes. These slip ups are normal. Don't beat yourself up. Get back on track. Continue to learn, continue to improve, and give it time. The patient side of things is one of the biggest reasons outside of sustainability why so many people fail because they just don't have patience to make it a lifestyle, keep going no matter what. And that's huge. I mean, you can do tons of stuff wrong and get fantastic results if you just keep going and stop giving up all the time. It's the yo-yo dieting that completely destroys people and what you wanna get away from. Okay, with all that said, if you're new to tracking macros, I do recommend checking out this top video next. We'll walk you through how to find your maintenance calories, how to adjust your calories to start, how to adjust your macros from the start all the way to the end and reach the results you're after. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in that other video.